From better perception to improved problem-solving skills, here's why your brain is better on video games. Your brain, it's kind of important. OK, no, it's very important. And it's one of your primary jobs to look after it, keep it covered in hats when you're cold, and generally make sure it's happy. Thankfully, that includes feeding it the right amount of video games. I'm going to stress right here that it's important to keep everything in moderation, and it's equally vital to keep a balance with other activities. But it turns out that science has proven that video games have plenty of brilliant benefits you'll want to shout about. So, from improving your think power to keeping you calm in stressful situations, here's why your brain is better on video games. So you've headed into town to meet your friends. You said you'd see them in front of a certain store, but it's a Saturday and there's seas of people everywhere, making it look nigh on impossible to meet up. But then, even from far away, you catch a glimpse of them amongst the crowd, so there's no need to grab your smartphone. Job done. Here's the thing, chances are that someone who didn't play games might have spent a lot longer looking. Thanks to video games, your day-to-day -day perception skills are significantly higher than the general population. This is exactly what's discussed in a paper by the University of Rochester's Brain and Cognitive Science Department called Action Video Game Experience Alters the Spatial Resolution of Vision. The authors talk about the fact that avid action game players are consistently found to find a specific target in a field of distracting objects much more accurately than non-players. As gamers, not only can we process what we see more efficiently, we can also track more objects at once than those who don't play. Cementing the idea even further, it's been found that non-players who then play action games as training actually then go on to show similar improvements. This means that even picking up the Division 2 and settling down to a session is improving our ability to perform complex visual tasks. In an experiment, the University of Rochester discovered that test subjects who played more than five hours of action games a week were better at finding one particular item in a crowded space of similar objects. So if you've ever wondered why you're so good at hidden object games, it might all be down to your previous, well, training. I've done plenty of videos on the many ways that games are actually good for you, but one of the most interesting and practical applications of our game time is its effect on our problem-solving skills. Given that there are so many different types of game and, you know, problems, it's hard to create experiments that measure this exact correlation, but there is plenty of discussion around it in scientific circles. The article The Benefits of Playing Video Games discusses exactly this, that thanks to games of all genres, whether we're playing Portal, doing puzzles in Resi 2, or trying to find logical new ways to get to a door in I Hate This Game, our problem-solving skill muscles are constantly being exercised. Given that most of the time we're given no instructions on how to solve puzzles, yes, I see you, the witness, it means that we're always thinking on our pixelated feet. Education writer Mark Prensky, in his book From Digital Natives to Digital Wisdom, argues that our exposure to such a range of games with such a range of open-ended problems has improved an entire generation. He calls the children learning in this environment digital natives and says that games, as well as the internet, have created a generation of people who will use trial and error instead of using a manual when they're stuck. Games then, with their ever more interactive ways to fail and succeed, are constantly teaching us to think outside the box. No one is handing us a manual to beat a boss in Devil May Cry 5 or telling us the best position to build a smelter in Satisfactory. These are problems we need to solve ourselves, training us to do exactly the same thing in the real world. Hopefully with less terrifying spindly leg creatures though. So, improved spatial awareness? Great. Better problem solving? I will take that. But another exceptionally useful learned behaviour we get from games is an improved understanding of how to deal with stressful situations. You might not feel like impossible games are making you a less frustrated human being, but actually, they are. Let's picture the scene. In fact, we don't have to. Here's Matt playing Sekiro. He's been trying to tackle this particular section for a while, but unfortunately has been ending up, well, there you go. The good news is that psychologically, this is actually good for Matt. I've referenced it before and probably will again, but this drives me nuts how gaming technologies can elicit positive experiences by means of negative emotions explains exactly why. 
This is an interesting paradox. Dying in games isn't fun. So why do we hunt out games in which we fail? Well, the paper discusses the fact that the game lets us repeatedly try again, which is positive and lets us take risks in order to succeed the next time. But what's also important here is what gaming researcher Jasper Joll calls the promise of video games. That promise is the fact that we can succeed. There is more game after death and repeated failure at a task and then eventual success means even greater emotional relief when we do succeed. Training our brains through these experiences then actually reflects better on us in the real world, where immediate failure won't necessarily mean that we give up. Games teach us to get back on our feet and try again. Thank you. Thank you. I've done a whole video on the different ways that games can help relieve stress. They're obviously not a replacement for professional help with anxiety, but as part of a balanced day can make your brain a little bit more content. A big part of that is down to how they make you feel when you play, and whether that's a positive thing. It's obviously game dependent, and you can check out our list of the most relaxing games you can play on PC, but when we're playing, scientists have found that the parts of our brains that kick into action are the bits associated with good things. In her article, How Video games can teach you to fight depression, Jane McGonigal says that the two chunks of our grey matter that are stimulated are the ones that we link to motivations and learning and memory. This fully supports the earlier discussion about improving our cognitive processes, but these are happy areas to have activated. When we play, our brains are lighting up in all the right places, we're being more positive and thus resilient to the challenges we face in everyday life. In short, we're happier when we're at our mouse and keyboard, but also happier when we head away from the screen. What's important to note here though is the idea of balance, to make sure that when we play games we aren't playing to ignore the outside world and escape it, but for the enjoyment of the experience. Instead of promoting negativity and running away from everyday life, McGonagall says that we should always engage in what's called purposeful play. That's video game playing to enrich our lives and make us happier and healthier. In need of a little pick-me-up, eh? So that's why our brains are better on video games. Let us know if you've got any stories about gaming improving your everyday life in the comments below. Drop us a like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to Logitech G for more videos just like this one. If you do already subscribe, don't forget to hit that notification bell so you know exactly when our next video lands.